So I just spent a day putting down a click together laminate flooring. So you can tap it in. Now, I had never done this before, and while it's not difficult at all, I came up with six things after the fact that I wish I had known when I started. So if you out there are about to put down this kind of flooring, then just keep these things in mind and everything will go nice and smoothly. So this is my mother-in-law's room has a tile looking floor. It's a laminate floor. However, we don't really like it that much. Um, but I don't want to spend a lot of time and money putting down a wooden floor. So instead, we went to the store and got a laminate wood looking floor instead. That was on sale. It was like less than a dollar a square foot. Now this whole room with a closet is about 180 square foot or 16 square meters. So not too big of a space. We're gonna put it down right on top of the old floor. Uh, yesterday I spent some time painting this room. It was kind of a darker beige before uh, and she wanted something a little bit brighter. So this room had some quarter round trim. So last night I took that off using a floor scraper and I labeled all the pieces. North number two, south number one, south number three. That way it will be a lot easier to put it back together again. I also have a tapping block, a pull bar, gap spacers. Of course you could just <laughs> use a piece of whatever for that, piece of wood. The way it goes together. So when you put a piece down, you have to connect it first from the long side and then you tap it going from the right to the left. Along those same lines, as you put down the flooring, you need to always start from the left, moving right, and then do the next row. Now, I don't know if this is true for all click together flooring options out there, but this is how the product worked that I bought. So I just did the first cut here, uh, using a jigsaw, saw horses, and some clamps. And now I'm just gonna go in and see if it fits. When you have nice trim work, like around a door, then use an oscillating multi-tool to cut that quarter or half inch through there. That way you can just slide your piece underneath and it looks really nice and crisp. Otherwise you have to kind of sketch out that whole profile and that can be kind of tricky. I figured once I get past these little finicky things, everything should move pretty fast. Okay, I'm gonna go cut, and hopefully I got all my measurements correctly. <laughs> Don't forget the spacers on the ends. So it's easy to think that, oh, I, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space. I don't need the spacers. But as you start tapping it and banging it in, uh, everything is gonna move. So it's really important to have those spacers on the ends. I must have missed putting a spacer and now the whole ba bottom one kind of moved this way. So I have to figure out a way to put this all back. Don't forget to do the running bond. And that just means that you start with a full size piece, do your line, but then when you start the next row you want to do a shorter piece and then do a full size piece, full size piece. That way you don't get the lines where the pieces butt up against each other to be like across the flooring. Uh, that's not very strong and it doesn't look very good. I did forget at one point, not a, not a good thing. It's going down pretty, pretty good, I would say. There are a couple little areas where it's not just perfect. I was hoping to be done a little faster. It's taking me longer than I, than I anticipated. Matt's out in the shop doing other stuff, but if you had somebody who could just do all your cuts for you while you were putting in, because I'm going in and out, in and out doing the cuts, just taking a long time. The other thing too though, I'm getting just a little bit worried that we didn't buy enough. I think it's gonna be maybe just enough, although I'm not 100, so getting a touch worried there. When you get to the end of the line and you need to measure where to cut, 
Uh, remember, the piece can only go in one way. So flip it around, make your mark and make that cut. That way when you flip it around again, it all goes in smoothly. I feel like I'm definitely getting the hang of this now though after a couple hours worth. Now in my instructions that I got, it says to only tap this way, never tap this way. However, I found that after you tap to this way, sometimes clicks away just a little bit. And then if you are careful, you can just put your block and then carefully tap it in. And doing that just makes everything go together easier. So you just have to be kind of mindful about where the little edge is so you don't tap and destroy that so everything can click together. Done at the end. You inspecting, darling? The very end here that's kind of annoying to fit it with the threshold and the door and the molding. Last part is done. Exhausted. Need food, need something to drink. I'll show you how pretty it is tomorrow. So basically finished everything up last night. Um, I have like a few pieces to put in the closet and a uh, quarter round trim around and little bit things like that. I just made it in terms of, I think I have one full piece left over. It was actually a little over 60 cents per square foot. Not a dollar like I previously thought. Under $200 in a day's worth of work made a huge difference in this room. So I put a post on Instagram while doing this and of course it looked like tile flooring, uh, you know, and putting this above. And there was a lot of opinions and thoughts people had whether, you know, that I didn't put underlayment under here. So first of all, that wasn't a tile floor, that was a laminate floating floor that looked like tile that already had underlayment under it. Uh, so I just put this on top of that. And there are like no sound dishes in this room. There's no squeaking, walking around at all. This is a bedroom. There really is no need for underlayment considering it already has it and it was going on top of an, an existing uh, floating floor. So just wanted to address that. So a couple of finishing touches now after doing the floor and the wall blinds. So nice, huh? We got painting, floors, shades. Uh, next up, some things on the wall. Full transformation. We got a rug. Go Cover the new floors. <laughs> we'll make it cozy in here. What do you think? Look at all these books. Doing a flooring like this, I think is a really great option. The whole thing actually costs about $135. These kinds of projects that don't cost a whole lot of money and that provide a huge difference in terms of style and look and color and feel, I think are really fun to do. And I know my mother-in-law really enjoys the result as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you are about to do a flooring like this, good luck, it's not very difficult. Um, I hope you get a big transformation as well. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye